objectified. The classical grace of her feminine form enthralls and delights my appreciative eye. No statue of marble, so cold to the touch, this woman unmoving is vibrant with breath and supple of flesh that is warmed by her blood. Beneath the caress of a sensual hand, the swell of her breast would be yielding and soft, not hard with the coolness inherent to stone. Her beauty is flawless, in stillness compassed, awaiting my pleasure, the whim of my will. She poses pristine or gossamer veiled, a nymph or a maiden of wholesome allure. With prurient fancy, or just to admire, I watch her, caress her, undress her with eyes. I feel how she trembles with something not fear, that sets her heart pounding, and heightens her blood. I know she is moist in response to my gaze, when slowly I loosen the veil from her hips, revealing her delta, her velvety shrine, the portal through which our humanity slips. I stand before him, naked, with my downcast eyes, a passive statue, my volition sacrificed, that I may be displayed upon a pedestal, an object art amid amenities of wealth. He seems to have no sense of consciousness in me. I feel his silent gaze upon my graceful form, a gaze that sweeps across my breasts, my swell of hip, and willfully ignores the windows of my soul. The quiver of my ligaments, and thunderous pounding of my heart, the glowing heat of racing blood, beneath caresses of his eyes, in my imagination felt, are all responses of the flesh, without direction from my will. When he removes my final veil of modesty, I feel the dampness well unbidden in my loins. Then self-awareness slips from sensibility into a secret realm of inward consciousness to guard what still remains of my humanity.